Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, I have the original Hubson Zeno. Uh, I promise you this is going to be the last video you see of this drone for a while. It's a five-year-old drone. Why am I doing this video? I just love flying this guy. It is. It goes back to the kind of the basics, uh, and it was one of the first really reasonably priced uh, three-axis gimbal, 4K, 30 frames per second camera drones. Look on here, you're not going to see any sensors or anything. It has any, no obstacle avoidance, uh, no altitude hold, anything of that kind. It's got GPS and a barometer in there. That's what tells it where it's at in space. Uh, however, what we have today is uh, a 4200 milliamp hour battery. And uh, this is a large, the stock battery that comes with it is 3000 milliamp hours. And it's good for, I don't know, uh, someplace between 15 and 20 minutes flight time. This guy should be significantly longer. Uh, I haven't flown this thing out at the Snake River Canyon for a long time, so th I thought I would take the opportunity with this battery. I finally got the battery issue uh, straightened out. You've probably seen, uh, may have seen that video already uh, where I downgraded the firmware to an older version of firmware and it seems to be working great. So, uh, Let's quit messing around, let's get this drone in the air, and I'll show you a few tricks that this drone can do. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of range, uh, but, but it does okay. And I'll see if I can get it down into the canyon too, and see if we can get it down low and so forth. Uh, so uh, let's quit messing around, let's get this bird in the air. Okay, I'm a little concerned. I'm using my iPhone <laughs> on this really hot day, so I hope it doesn't dim too much. Enter device, enter main interface, and it should give us, it'll show us not connected here for a second, and then it'll give us a, uh, yeah, it's telling us ready to fly, and it should give us a status page too. I'm gonna go back in the shade out from the front of the camera, but you'll get to see the drone take off. So there's the status list that I was telling you about. I like the way Hubson does this, and it tells you, uh, you know, all your firmware package, etc. All of our calibrations are normal. It tells us that our battery's at 100%, so, we're good to go there. Uh, we are going to uh, shoot in uh, 4K30. We've got 13 satellites, which is pretty much normal for this drone. Uh, there we're in video mode. Let's take a look at our video settings, maybe. There we go, yeah, we're in 4K30. White balance, sunny day. Yes, it is a sunny day. It is a very hot day. I think, as I recall, I have to go and turn on grid lines, which we did. Uh, we can format the SD card won't hurt. I think I did that already, but uh, but let's let it uh, format it here. So I cut part of that out, speed check passed, and so it's it's formatted and it likes it. It takes it a while to do that. I don't know how long that took, a minute or so. Uh, but uh, what we need to do is once I start recording, it'll ask me to, uh, to do a, a GPS handshake. I can't remember what they call it. Let me start recording and you'll see it on screen here. Yeah, bind a current device. So I'm going to hold the, the uh, camera or the, the uh, phone low to the drone. And uh, yeah, it says it, it succeeded. My phone is already dimming. So I'm going to go back into the shade. What that does is it, uh, it, it tells the camera or the uh, phone and the uh, drone that they agree on the GPS location. So we're going to start recording again. We're in 4k 30. I just saw my screen just dimmed again. So it's a good thing I'm down here in the uh, In the shade. So let's click start auto take off And there's that drone and do we get the Hubson drop? Yeah, maybe a little bit not too bad I'm going to uh, I'm gonna walk back out here so we can get our droney And we're going to send this guy out over the canyon. It's been over the out over the canyon many times before, but never this part. So, uh, and this drone is not as fast as uh, as I was just flying the Air 2S out here. It's not as fast, but reverse and up now. And you know, there it goes, and it's doing just fine. I can barely see my uh, FPV screen. I can tell you that. I'm going to get back in the shade here. A little bit so I can kind of see what I'm doing. Yeah, there, that's better. Uh, man, I'll tell you, you, uh, I, I, I miss what that, uh, uh, what the uh, uh, RC Pro 
could do with that brighter. You know, I was complaining about the thousand nits on it. It ain't nothing compared to this iPhone. So it's it struggles. So let's go full forward here. 95% battery. We'll see how long we get. If we get 20 minutes on this thing, I will be happy as a clam. We're going to drop down into negative altitude here. And I am going to walk out into the sun because I want to get, uh, and boy, we had a little cloud come over. That's good. Uh, I want to be able to get a straight shot uh, with these antennas at the drone. So now we're getting down into negative altitude. And oh goodness, the, the sun came out again. And man, I can barely see my FPV screen. Uh, but let's get down there. We're going to continue to drop. We're kind of right in the center of the, uh, of the river here. We should be able to drop this guy right down. And I'm going to get to where I can point directly at it with the, uh, with the antenna. I'm close to the edge of the canyon. That always makes me nervous. We got 20 satellites. We got plenty of satellites. Uh, you know, I'm going to turn around and come the other way. That way I can shade uh, the camera here with my, <laughs> with my body. Because the way the sun is right now, I think I can get a little bit of shade. So let's go full stick forward this direction. And boy, I am right standing on the edge of the uh, canyon here. But it gives us a good straight shot at the drone. And I know I can get lower than that because I have before with, uh, with other drones. I've been, I think, down about 80 meters. Oh gosh, my phone just, it just dimmed again. Holy cow, I'm darn near black on my iPhone. And that's the problem. That's, that's why uh, modern drones with smart controllers are so great because, you know, you can, you can, quite frankly, you can see what, what, what you're doing. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, you know, even when I'm shading the phone, it is almost completely dark. Uh, and unfortunately, that is, uh, that's something that happens with an iPhone. And again, it's, you know, it's a hot day today and I'm, uh, uh, you, you know, I'm, 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 doing a screen recording, I was going to say there at the same time, so that makes a difference. I am going to have to get back over underneath the shade of my car, and I don't know, uh, how, you know, if we'll lose, if we'll lose connection here, because I can barely see anything on this screen. I can see, and I can tell I'm, you know, I can vaguely see where I'm over the river, but not how you would like, <laughs> how you would prefer to be able to see what you were doing. So I think I can get, yeah, get in the shade here. Yeah, it went into GPS hold. So evidently, as I was walking back, we must have lost signal. Yeah, aircraft disconnected. So what it will do, it will go into return to home. Uh, yeah, and we were, we were a ways away there. So yeah. GPS hold. Let me uh, let me rise up here and get this guy higher up and give ourselves a better chance at a signal. So I'm sorry, I wanted to fly this thing a lot lower in the canyon, but uh, standing out there on the edge where I need to be, I just couldn't do it. So we're going to get up higher here, and you're going to see this thing will only fly less than a kilometer. Uh, It'll get about 950 meters away or some such. And I guess even at that, we're having issues right now. I'm seeing the control signal drop. Yeah, that's at about 900 meters. We'll keep trying to push if it'll, if we can get a, a connection back here. I'm faced directly towards the drone. I've got the flat part of the antennas directly towards the drone. And it's probably already in return to home, I'll bet. We'll see. Yeah, it says return mode. And then we lost it. So it's coming back. Oh, no, we were out there a ways. I, I see it updated the telemetry. So we were out there probably max distance. 
Yeah, 950 meters, and it's it's coming back now. So hold mode. So let's go ahead and hit return to home, and it'll start coming back to us. Now it still says, uh, yeah, now return mode. Okay. So it's coming back to us, and uh, man, my phone is hot. I can feel the heat coming off my phone. That's what happens when you're flying on a really hot day like today. Let's see if we can yaw while it's in return mode. And you can't. I wondered about that. You can pick the camera up and down, but you can't yaw uh, with the drone. So let's see, what do we got battery? We're only down to 67% battery. I mean, you know, the battery power is really is doing great. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I want to show you on this drone. I, I, I'd take a picture, but you know, pictures on this thing aren't that great. Uh, and this video, I think you're going to think is looks surprisingly good. It is 4K. It's got a really low bit rate. So whenever you're turning the drone, whenever you're yawing or anything like that, uh, that's when it, uh, you know, it doesn't look that great. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we were going full speed there, about eight meters per second. And it's coming back to us. As soon as it gets back here, and, it, and, and there's the drone. Boy, I'm hearing something beep in my car. I must have, I bet I left the uh, RC Pro on. So there we are. You know what? Uh, I wonder if this guy will get a precision landing. It's supposed to have the ability. Now this is the one that would probably, and I need to stop recording. I'm gonna stop recording and let's see how it does. See if it'll find that landing pad. Because uh, it's supposed to have, uh, yeah, and this is the one that probably would benefit from a round landing pad. Yeah, it's not, yeah, searching for apron, it says. Well, I don't know, it's kind of moving. Yeah, no, it's going to go ahead and land. Yep, it's going to land. I'm going to, uh, See if I can cancel that. I picked it up. I picked the uh, picked it up manually there. So I took it out and canceled that. Let's see if we can get it over the top. Well, heck, let's not even land. Holy cow! What am I thinking? Let's continue with the flight. Uh, so let's point it out. Point it back towards me. There I am. <laughs> Couldn't find myself there for a second. Let's start recording again. And I want to show you, uh, this, this guy will do a pretty good version of Follow Me itself. So if I can see, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see good enough on the screen here. Let me get out where it can differentiate me. Part of the problem I'm having here, I mean, I, I just... I. It is just so difficult. Okay, there I am. And I'm going to click on the little X up in the top left, and I'm going to go into following mode. And I'm going to click uh, active track. And I think I need to be higher, yeah. Back it up just a little bit. And man, I mean, I, I'm just telling you guys, it is so hard to see. Okay, so we're going to click that again. We're going to go into uh, following mode, active track, and uh, understood. We're going to do the square around me and click go. And it's got me. And you're going to see this drone. Uh, I'm hoping. Yeah, it's following me. So I can move around here. And the drone will follow me. Now, mind you, this is on a five-year-old drone. This was a $300 drone when I bought it, $299. And it has active track. Now, a lot of cheaper drones, and I'm pushing it backwards now, a lot of cheaper drones have uh, GPS follow me. But the thing about GPS follow me is it doesn't keep you in the center of frame. 
So I'm going to push, I'm going to walk straight towards the edge of the canyon and we're going to push the drone over the edge of the canyon. And by the way, uh, well, it's moving to the side of me now because it's, it's keeping the same uh, angle that it had. Uh, but, uh, but you'll be able, as soon as I get here, you'll be able to see over the edge of the canyon. And I'm telling you, this is scary as hell. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is straight down right here, folks. You know, I don't know. I don't like getting any closer than this. I mean, I'm looking right down the, uh, the edge of the canyon. So, yeah, and boy, my phone is just darn near, darn near black. Uh, <laughs> so, let me get back in the shade where I have a fighting chance of being able to see something. And again, the drone will just follow me. Uh, I think that's a cool trick that a five-year-old Hubson Zeno can do that, uh, well, I'll tell you what, uh, the follow me function on the Autel Nano Plus doesn't work this good. It doesn't. It's got active track, but it doesn't work like this. <laughs> Boy, I just walked over a big pile of nails there, I'm sure, where they've knocked apart pallets. Okay, so it's probably going to lose me here, but I'm getting in the shade, and we are going to stop that. I click stop. And, uh, yeah, we're at 39% battery, so we're getting... We've been recording for quite a while, and I'd like to tell you how long we've been recording, but uh, I can't because uh, I, can't, uh, I can't see that much detail on the, uh, on the FPV screen here. Let's, uh, let's go along the edge of the canyon here. This, is, these, this makes for a pretty cool picture. I'd show you some more, if I could, you know, my intention was to show you more of the things that this drone can do, but I just, I'm just telling you, I can't see FPV well enough to do it. We're on the edge of the canyon here, I'm about 20 meters high, yeah, and it's telling me, I don't know, it's giving me a warning about battery, yeah, telling me I'm at 30%. So it has an algorithm in it that it'll, it'll, it'll return to home when it uh, feels necessary. But, but uh, I guess the other thing I'm going to tell you is that we got out there, uh, I'm going to drop the camera, whoop, yeah, it's in return mode, so it's saying it's time to come home. So we're just going to let it, <clears throat> we'll see if it'll find the uh, landing pad, I doubt that it will, because we saw that once already. We'll go ahead and land it. Uh, Man, I wish I could tell you, I, like, I was trying to look at the numbers on there and recording. You guys will be able to see it on the screen recording. I can't because my phone is just too dark. I am so glad we have smart controllers. Look at that. It's pretty close to the darn uh, landing pad right now, though. Let's see if it finds it. I hope that it does. This is, like I said, this drone, I think, would benefit from a round landing pad. I'm going to stop recording. And it'll, because uh, it, it uses that camera to find the pad. Let's see if it finds it. It says searching. And you'll see a target if it finds it. It'll show a little target on there. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to find it. Yeah. Yeah, there was a rock right there, but it did okay. Uh, so it didn't hurt and it didn't even really kick up a lot of dust. Okay, I'll remember to uh, shut down recording here so I don't uh, uh, corrupt a file, but uh, well, no, I guess it's not, it looks like it's not recording. Anyway, uh, let me get everything shut down and we'll do a quick conclusion. Hey, okay, the original Hubson Zeno. Uh, you know, like I said, this is uh, another one of those drones that's near and dear to my heart. I think because it was so cheap at the time, uh, and I just had a lot of fun with it. When, when, it, when it first came out, you know, it was a mess. There was firmware update after firmware update in 2019. Gosh, in fact, uh, Hubson was sending me, ha having me beta test some of their firmware for this guy. It was a lot of fun to do. Ron Brown did it as well. A number of us uh, had this drone early on. And now that I've got the uh, battery power issue solved with this guy by rolling back the firmware, it's a keeper. I was afraid it was just going to become a trophy on the shelf, 
But as it is, I'll continue to fly it once in a while. Now, you probably won't see it again on a video for a year or two years or whatever. I don't know when I'm going to fly it again. Uh, I've got many more capable drones than this guy. But it, it's still, I think it's still a valid product. And I still think there's a lot of people, if this was the only drone they had, they, they'd be fine with it because you, you can get good, decent 4K video. When does it fall down? When you're yawing and moving because of the bit rate. And I don't know that the gimbal is 100% capable of those kind of quick moves, but it does pretty good. It's got a nice flat horizon. Uh, when you're just moving straight forward, the video doesn't look too bad. It's acceptable, right? There's a lot of drones today that I wish had you know, the cheaper drones that had the quality of video that this guy does. Uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Flight time, I don't know how long we were up in the air there. 20 minutes, something like that. I couldn't see on the screen because my, my iPhone just got so dark you could barely see it. And I see I have a bug on my glasses here. Uh, uh, but anyway, got rid of that bug. Uh, but at any rate, uh, I guess that's about it. This is Marcus Crawford with the iPhone. Most of all, I appreciate you taking the time out of this video. And of course, we'll see you on the next one. Uh, the original Hubson Zeno. Just so much fun. See you guys later.